quick reminder that we're going to have React Pico at the end of the year. And if you haven't seen yet, so there are the prices, there are real career boosters, there are like PS4 with the game, and what else do we have? Chromecast. So, work pretty. Who 
FCM and Amazon SNS. Those are the two most commonly used platforms to send push notification. A lot of you might have already used them uh, in other scenarios and uh, uh, be very familiar with the API. So the good thing about them is that they have uh, RESTful APIs. So on your backend service, all you need to do is send HTTP requests to their API, uh, choose the right FCM, for example, uh, FCM, choose the FCM server to connect it to. And then you send your request to FCM, FCM dispatch the message to the devices, and you're done. And they have admin console that you can see, um, you can see how the messages are delivered, how many messages are uh, de delivered uh, throughout the day, etc. Right, all the traffic. It's very comprehensive. So seems like all the problem are solved. Uh, you on our backend service, we simply um, connect to FCM. Okay, so there are one more thing. How how does how do you know which device device to send to? There's one thing that gets generated on the device called token, device token, uh, whatever you call it. So what happens is uh, at the registration time, first thing the device does is generate a token and uh, send uh, send to backend or like your app server. Next time, when you need to send a notification from backend, you uh, you use this token as an identifier. Send it to uh, and Google FCM or Amazon SNS will recognize it and dispatch to the uh, device that has this token. It seems to be happy. Everything's done. Wow, we complete the project. Oops. Okay. A little problem. It's never that easy. So it comes to us that token management is pretty nasty. So we, we said token get generated on device, but sometimes tokens they get regenerated. How do you keep track of the latest token get that gets generated? Um, and also, how do you manage users? They have multiple devices, does have multiple tokens. One thing, of course, you can do is uh, you can have a list of tokens associated with user. So uh, so. Initially, our application logic is that every time when users log in, they get their current uh, local token and uh, send it along with the login information. The backend app server, app server has this API and keep track of this user ID associated with one token. So it's one to one uh, uh, mapping. And when we deal with users have multiple devices, we keep keep it as one to one uh, mapping. But still, every time when the token get regenerated, we need to keep track of this. Uh, initially, everything goes good because we were in MVP stage. So every time a user gets onto the app, we force them to log in and everything. But we need to optimize it. So the optimization is that we, we, uh, we store the user ID every time after the first time they log in. We store the user ID to local storage. Next time it brings up, we rehydrate directly from local storage. That means they no longer need to log in every time. So it also means we it's easier for us to lose the synchronization to the token number. When the token number is out of sync, um, the local device has a newer token, while the backend has a, an older one, the notification we send will not reach to the device. Um, one way to do it is, of course, uh, open another uh, simple API, which force the uh, app to always call this API every time when it starts up. Or even more extreme, theoretically, call this API to just send the latest token to it. But, well, we are not that patient, so apparently we try to hack it through. Uh, we find out that tokens are too nasty. We just don't use them at all. Alternatively, Remember, uh, did I mention or not? In F both uh, FCM and uh, SNS, instead of targeting device one by one, you also can publish a topic. And for FCM particularly, you can create a limited topic as you go. So, like, why don't you utilize that? So, we create a topic on each user ID, which sounds nasty, 
what if, what if you have millions, uh, millions of users? But since Google's, uh, Google is not charging us for that, well. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, naturally, every time a user uh, signs up, create a topic for them, and they subscribe to their own user ID topic. The beauty of that is that we solve the problem of targeting multiple devices because they will all sign up with one user ID. And also, um, it's easy for us to just just manage uh, in the back end because uh, we no longer need to have the complexity of all the token uh, logic, association, one to end, one to add, uh, end to one, everything. So that's nice. So you can see also an alternative for using it is uh, you can have, if you are familiar with PubNub, you can use PubNub to um, manage all the topics and connect PubNub to FCM. Use FCM to dispatch all the messages. So that's what. Okay, while we were struggling with token management, we also started looking at other uh, tools that can help us. This uh, platform called OneSignal comes into our mind, which uh, we eventually find is pretty good for beginners. So if you are a beginner, probably you will be interested. Um, this is also a platform. They have their own React Native package called React Native uh, OneSignal. They have almost everything implemented for you. You only need to implement the uh, very minimum on register, on register, and on receiving. Um, also, you same thing. You send requests to their API, <coughs> API, and they will dispatch notification to targeted devices. Uh, their one thing, their admin console also allow you to send the notification manually. So if you don't have a backend, it's uh, not a problem. If you only need to send some promotion uh, notifications at some time, like. Uh, you can just type it in on their website and click send, and it will go through. Uh, one nice thing about their platform I would like to mention is the filtering and the tagging and filtering feature. So earlier, uh, during the process solving the token problem on FCM, uh, we use topic. That is very handy when you are subscribing to newsfeed or uh, exclusive contents. So you can say, uh, subscribe to weather and uh, some this particular content, like React at NYC's contents, or the next class, all the classes, or all the lectures by this creator. Um, the one signal has a different way of doing it. Uh, they allow you to tag every device. So when the device is registering, you can set its tag, multiple tags to uh, to the device. You can say user ID equals one two three, starting time equals current time, and uh, uh, news speed equals global. Something like when you are when you started listening. And then uh, on the back end, when I'm sending out notifications, I can I can say uh, if I say sending to user ID equals one two three, it will target only one user, all the devices of this user. Or if I say starting time greater than a timestamp seven days ago, then I can target all the new users that registered started registering like uh, within a week. Or if I say uh, target, or I can combine multiple criteria together and make a complicated query, which simplify uh, logic on the back end. Because um, technically, you can do the same thing for FCM if you build your own tagging and uh, filtering logic on your push notification server. But as a startup and as building an MVP, time and resource are the very limited thing we have. So whatever gives us most, we will use. Uh, you'll see this is, we ended up using one signal for our MVP stage. But everything comes with a problem. Here is the problem. Sometimes notifications fail to bring up target modeling app. I mentioned earlier in our app, every time user click on the notification, it should bring up a corresponding uh, screen, which is uh, has the data of that event they, uh, they schedule. So firstly, there will be a model coming up summarizing the event. And then clicking some button on the module, it will lead you to the screen corresponding to the event. But it just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. 
uh, does it. Especially, uh, we looked further and find, find that whenever the app is killed in background, notification data payload gets lost. So, if it was killed, when you click notification, it will first try to bring up the app itself. And when the app gets the payload data, there's nothing in the payload data. And then there's nothing to render, render for the model, that's nothing that shows up. It's, so I, I would like to, definitely like to know how uh, some of your experts would solve that. Uh, we find two possible solutions. One is always retrieve, not always retrieve. So whenever uh, app detects the payload data is empty, try to retrieve payload data from the server. So we open an API on the server that says, uh, takes user ID, and every time if the, if the client side say, says, give me all the notification of this user ID, we dump it to the client. And thus, they can just uh, use that payload data to bring a model. This doesn't work very nice if you have multiple things, and allocating uh, specific uh, payload data to show up will be a little bit messy. Uh, so, I would say it works best if you have an inbox. And uh, so when you get into the app, you first say allocate into the inbox, and you just dump all the new messages into the inbox. Another way which we eventually take is store to and retrieve from local storage. Every time when we get a notification, despite the app is alive or not, we store the payload data into local storage. Since our app will always rehydrate the data, we use Redux. So every time when you rehydrate data from local storage, it will know if there's a new notification comes in and if that belongs to a model. If that's the case, we first display a model inside of the app. And uh, that's, that's kind of solve the problem here. And then, that's not the only problem we have. Then we have another problem. We sometimes miss notifications. And it's very, I would say, very weird when you look into it. It just happens randomly. Um, all the middle stage platform like FCM or OneSignal, they keep track of um, or recipient of delivery. So all of the platform shows messages has been de delivered successfully, but they haven't been clicked on. So when we look further into it, we find all the missing notifications are rich notifications. But not all the rich notifications were missing. So again, we find that whenever the app was killed in the background, we will miss uh, rich notifications. It's a very similar symptom to the previous one, except in the previous case, we always get notification, but when we click on the notification, the app couldn't bring up correctly. In this case, the notification simply wouldn't show up at all. Why is that? So if we look into the mechanism of sending a, or rendering a rich notification, <coughs> by the way, uh, anyone knows what rich notification means? Or okay. So rich notification means the ones that contains image, buttons, or sounds like multimedia comments. So you will see you will see by nature probably the iOS wouldn't render it nicely with an image or sound. Um, so how it works is that firstly uh, the platform sends a silent notification with content available flag set to one. That notification contains um, all the instruction or the multimedia. When you reach to the uh, your device. Then the device firstly tries to uh, firstly try to wake up the application and render the notification into the rich notification. So using those data to give the, give you a notification that contains image and buttons. So this is a two-step process. You can see when the app was killed in the backend, then nothing can render it, and your payload probably get lost as well. So the first step never completed successfully, thus you wouldn't get to the actual notification pop up on your phone. Um, we still haven't got a very nice solution to it, so I'm open to any of you if you know or you can think of a good way to do it. We right now we just try to avoid rich notifications. 
Yes. <laughs> Begin their solution. Avoid it if there's a problem that prevents you from going. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope I cut it under 20 minutes. Definitely. Um, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. 